Okay. What is the year of your birth? 1934. Okay. Um, do you have children? Yes. Um, how many? Well, uh, I've got three stepchildren and two of my own and one daughter that died when she was 40. So a total of all six. Yes. Okay. From what country or countries were your ancestors located? I think they may have come from over in England. Migrated to the mountains up in Bavard, coast of Bavard. Next. What city or part of what state did you spend your formative years? Right here. <laughs> Okay, in your formative years, did you live in an urban, suburban, or rural area? I guess, would you say urban? Is this what mm -hmm. this is? Urban. Okay, so it says, where do you live now? Which would be... Right here. <laughs> <laughs> and you've lived here your whole life? Yes. Urban. I have to ask that one. Where have you lived the longest? Here. <laughs> now the one time I went and I lived in uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina for three months while my first husband was in the Marines. I lived up there about three months, but mm -hmm. that's the only place other than here. Have you ever lived in another country? No. Do you speak another language or no. dialect? I can't hardly speak English, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. To which economic class would you consider your parents to be in? Lower, middle, or upper? Middle. In yourself? Middle. Okay, to you, what is nature or the natural world? Nature to me is a beautiful tree or the sunset, the sky, the clouds, just anything outdoors. Were your parents' livelihoods or interests somehow connected to working with or in nature? No. Uh, Is your livelihood or interest somehow connected to working with or in nature? No, I'm afraid not. Okay. Are your children's livelihoods or interests somehow connected to working with or in nature? Well, my son plays music for a living. I don't know where you account that. I don't know if that's... I guess that's part of nature, playing music. Okay. As a child, how much free time did you prefer to spend outside? As little as possible, some, or you preferred to be outside? Yeah, I preferred to be outside. Now, how much How much do you like to be outside? As little as possible, some, or you prefer to be outside? Well, I would prefer to be outside, but I'm limited, so I'd probably just say some there. Okay. What things do you do to connect with the natural world? Well, now, I used to go hiking. My husband and I used to hike up in the mountains a lot. And we don't do that anymore because we're both disabled. But we get out, I get out in the yard as much as I can and do stuff in the yard. And we do go to the mountains and to the beach. I love to go to the beach and, uh, as often as I can. I told one of my sons that lives down there that when I get too old, don't put me in a nursing home, just remember me down there and set me on the beach in the morning and come give me something to eat at lunchtime that come get me at night. And I'd be happy. I'd be happy. So, good to me. Yeah, that's, uh, I love the beach. What meanings do these things have for you? What meanings do they have? Well, it's just God's beauty, what God has given us to care for and uh, to enjoy His beauty. Okay, this one you don't have to list everything, but it says to list your outdoor activities over the past year. Over the past year. Well, honey, I don't have a whole lot of outdoor activities. Like I said, I'm limited because I don't walk too good. But I do get out in the yard whenever I can, and I go to the beach when I can, and ride to the mountains. You know, that, that's about the extent of it because I'm limited. How have you learned about nature? Is there anything in your background that has made you knowledgeable or that makes you not very knowledgeable about nature? Well, I guess when I was little, we used to go out in the cornfield and lay down out in the cornfield and watch the clouds go by and try to make faces out of the clouds, <laughs> things like that. And that's, I guess, the only thing I can think of because my mom and dad worked in the cotton mill and they didn't have time to 
you know, treat teach us anything, but uh, mm -hmm. so but that's my earliest recollections of looking at the clouds and trying to figure out what they look like. <laughs> how is your heritage, culture, or way of life influenced? How has your culture, um, way of life influenced your view of nature? Well, like I said before, it made me real. It's made me realize how beautiful God's work is and what he, he's done for us to look at, what he's put here for us to enjoy and just look at. I mean, you, you know, you can look at a beautiful sunset and you don't have to do a thing, but you can see such a beautiful, you know, see God. You can see God in stuff like that. And trees, I love trees. I think there's nothing no more like that poem, no more beautiful than a tree. I, I believe that. Trees are beautiful. How is nature important to you? How is it important to me? Well, being out, just being out in the sunshine and just getting all the vitamins from the sun and just being out in the outside, you feel you don't feel confined. You, you're out in the whole big wide world when you're outside. If it's just in your front yard, you know, you can see see the little squirrels running around in the front yard, which you don't like from messing up your yard, but... <laughs> But anyway, that's that's where they live is in their trees, so you got to go along with it. Okay. Do you think in your lifetime some elements of nature will be lost? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's fast. It's coming that way fast. They uh, people are are destroying what God gave us to look look at fast, and I don't like that. But there's nothing I guess I can do about it. But uh, I, I really don't like it. Have you seen changes in language or dialect over the years? Language or dialect no longer in use or whose meaning was lost? <laughs> My dialect is lost. <laughs> I, I've got real southern talk. I talk real southern. And I went to school and I learned how to talk the right way, but I come out with it over there, over there, instead of over there, and, you know, things like that. And my husband gets aggravated at me for saying things like that, but it's just the way I was brought up. So, yeah, it's dying out, because my kids like that, my grandkids like that, and so it's dying out. <laughs> Can you name and explain any natural objects or local places in the natural world that hold some special meaning or significance to you? The beach right now, because I think, I'm not sure, but I think that's where my son-in-law took my daughter's ashes down to Myrtle Beach and threw them off the pier down at Garden City. So that has a big significance to me. I, I, more than any place right now I can think of. Do you feel that knowing the names of objects in the natural world, such as the names of insects or trees, changes your observation and or enjoyment or use of them? No. I don't need to know the name of it to enjoy it. I guess it would help in some cases, but not necessarily. Okay. Have you ever or do you now gather any product from nature for food, medicine, fuel, art, hobbies, sports? Uh, my husband swears on honey. We get we eat a lot of honey and uh, we take a lot of like fish oil, stuff like that, you know. We, d we depend on stuff like that now since we're getting a little older and the doctors tell us we need to do depend on stuff like that. Okay. Has your family passed on any things about nature or do you remember any things that others have told you? No, I can't think of anything right off hand. Okay, do you see a link between maintaining your way of life and maintaining the natural world? Maintaining my way of life and maintaining the natural, natural. world. Well, yeah, you got to maintain your life along with nature. You can't have one without the other, I don't think. It, it goes hand in hand. I, mean, you, uh, I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't go out and see the sunset or couldn't go out and see a beautiful cloud coming across the sky. And It just goes hand in hand. I, I don't if I'm answering that right. <laughs> okay. Oh, really?